Let's talk about equilibrium. So there's a difference between equilibrium and static equilibrium, um, but for both of these things, there are two requirements. And those requirements are that linear momentum P is a constant and angular momentum L is a constant. Now with static equilibrium, that word static means stationary. So what this means when something is stationary at the is that those constants are zero, which means that the object is just not moving stationary. So the requirements for equilibrium, because linear momentum P has to be a constant, that means that the net force on the system has to be zero because we know that force is going to cause a change in linear momentum. And also similar to that fact, if angular momentum L has to be constant, then the net torque has to also be zero because torque is what causes a angular momentum or a change in angular momentum of the system. So because of this, both net force and net torque have to be zero. And this is how we're going to solve these problems. So number one, we have the vector sum of all external forces that act on the body must be zero. And number two, the vector sum of all external torques that act on the body measured about any possible point must be zero. So these requirements hold for both static equilibrium and general equilibrium in which uh, linear momentum and angular momentum are constant but not zero. Now one more thing we have to talk about when we start before we start doing these problems is just the center of gravity or the center of mass. Same thing, two different names. We like to do that in physics sometimes. So we know that the gravitational force on a body effectively acts at a single point that we call the center of gravity or center of mass of that body. Like I said, this is the same term. They, it doesn't matter which one you use. They both mean the same thing. So this is going to be important when doing these equilibrium calculations because the weight of an object is a force on that object. And we can say that it occurs at the center of gravity of that object. So in this example right here, we have a bar that's being held up by a tension force from that cord that's at an angle of 55 degrees um, from the horizontal. But we also have to include the force of gravity of that bar pulling down on that bar. So this will make much more sense when we actually do some problems. But what you have to remember is that anytime something has a mass, you have to include the force of gravity on that object in your calculations for equilibrium.